Start trying to look at your face. Oh, I think it's my eye <laughs> friend. Trying something new. Can you send all over the country like that on your phone, on your the iPad? It's round to me. It's waiting. It's coming on right now. All right. Praise the Lord. Welcome you this evening to uh, Tuesday evening Bible study, our home group, Tuesday evening home group. And uh, if you're tuning in on the broadcast, we welcome you also. Last time we had a whole group, uh, Pastor, Pastor Woods filled in for me. I appreciate that. And, uh, let's pray. Pastor Woods, you pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us to be able to come together to study your word. I pray that you help your servant as he teaches. And I pray that you bless those that are watching online. I just pray that your will be accomplished in all that we're doing here this evening for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, beginning in, beginning in verse 1. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again, and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. 
And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Amen. And I was going to teach on just one uh, subject out of here, but I, maybe we'll, we'll do the, the whole, whole chapter if time uh, permits. Um, we started off here, this is part of what was known as the Sermon on the Mount. And we see here in Matthew chapter 7, um, Jesus teaching, he says, Judge not that ye be not judged. And he, um, basically what he was doing here is he was indicting the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Um, and, you know, because they basically held people to these different standards and they, they, they felt that their own traditions were more binding than the actual uh, law itself, which was not true. And they were very, very self-righteous. They looked down upon others and in a very, very condescending way. And it's very easy to do that if a person's heart isn't right. And their heart definitely wasn't right. But even as... Uh, even as uh, I, I hate to say it, but even it can even happen in Christendom. It shouldn't happen. It doesn't have, have to happen, but it, it, it can happen where people um, look down on others. But that's not what we do as Christians. And this here, this judge not, is one of the most misconstrued scriptures or misquoted scriptures in the Word of God. Um and uh, it's kind of interesting because um, usually uh, the people that try to quote that or use that scripture, it's it's it really don't know anything about the word uh, with, about the word of God. What I'm saying by that is you've heard people say uh, somebody will say something, do something, they'll say, "Judge not." Maybe you had somebody say that at work. <laughs> Judge not, lest you be judged. And um, a lot of times when people do that, I'm not just making a blanket statement, they do that because they're willing to justify themselves. They'll say, judge not, because that if they can reverse how they feel, the conviction that they feel, it makes them feel justified in their own mind, but they're really not justified. So it's a very, very mis, mis, uh, misquoted scripture. Judge not, lest you be judged. And... Um, Jesus, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, saying, uh, don't judge people, or it's wrong to judge people. Now, we're not God. That's, that's, not, that's not what he's saying. He's not saying, go ahead and try to play the office of, of God. But uh, he, what he was saying is, uh, you have to judge righteous judgment. And as we mentioned, the, the, the way that the Pharisees were looking at people it, was, it wasn't righteous. It was self-righteous. They had the wrong perspective. Because throughout life, um, we're going to have to make judgments. We have a mind. We're reasoning individuals. We see things, and, and we have to decide on, on, on certain things. If I give you an example of that, different types of judgment. Uh, if... if I was going to go on vacation, and I'm going to have somebody watch my house for me, and I have some friends in mind, well, and I have certain individuals in mind, and uh, maybe one individual, I know that he doesn't take care of his house very well. I'm not necessarily going to have him watch my house and have free reign in my house. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not going to be wise and loving. I'm not going to say to him, hey, but you know what? My man, you're, you're a slob. You're not watching my house, but... I have to make a value judgment mm -hmm. in doing that. So I'm going to pick somebody who I feel is going to be responsible, is responsible with their own things. So we see that we, we have to make judgments. He said, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And, uh, you know, there is a law of sowing and reaping, how we treat people. We treat people right; it's going to come back yeah. to us. If we treat people wrong, uh, it's it's going to come back to us. Uh, the Bible says, uh, 
For God is, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? Corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So uh, it comes back around again, how we, how we treat people. Um, George Eliot said, don't judge a book by its cover. And I believe it was Henry Ford said, he said, if I remember correctly, don't find fault, find the remedy. Yes. <laughs> you know, and like our pastor taught, if you can't, uh, if you can't help somebody, why would you want to hurt them? Yes, that's true. Why would you want to destroy somebody? I, I agree with that. He said in verse three, and why beholdest thou? Uh, oh, and, and, and in reference, I don't want to get too far ahead with, with this, with the, uh, uh, with the, with the, with the judging. Um, the Bible says that he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he is judged of no man. And what he's, what he's basically saying is, is that um, an individual that is born again of the Spirit of God, that has their nature's been changed, they've been made partakers of the divine nature, he's a spiritual individual. His life will automatically convict the natural man. Well, automatically. What did Jesus say? He said, he said uh, in, in, in uh, I believe it's in chapter 8, to the religious, he said, which of you convinceth me of sin? And I can't think of anybody more spiritual than Jesus. So, so he that, he that is, is spiritual judgeth all things, but we're told to judge righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. Righteous judgment. And <clears throat> I thought about this when I was putting together this Bible study, how that... Uh, Paul rebuked the church at uh, at Corinth, and we could turn to it here. An example of not using proper judgment. First Corinthians, chapter five. He said here in verse one, "It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have." His father's wife. And ye are puffed up. You're lifted up in pride and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. And he was rebuking them there because uh, they had this man in their church that apparently he had committed fornication with his, uh, as one person said, uh, perhaps his stepmother, uh, his father's wife. And, uh, and the church uh, was more interested in who their favorite teacher was and their parties and being lifted up in pride and their spiritual gifts that they neglected discipline in the church. And they allowed this to go on. And he rebuked them for it. And, and, and it. and it wasn't right. He said to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the, in the day of the Lord Jesus. Should have been excommunicated uh, from the church. Not because you hate the man or you're trying to throw him away. Uh, he said so that uh, by excommunicating him, uh, you know, because obviously he's not in the will of God, uh, uh, maybe he would be afflicted by Satan, and it would cause him to repent. And then we read, we read later on, apparently they had uh, exercised that discipline, and uh, Paul said to them, uh, uh, forgive him and love him, because they, they had allowed him to come back into the church. And, uh, you know, people can be very critical. You know, the Bible says, um, the Bible says that uh, it's by grace that we're saved. Yes. So, you know, we have to be very careful when we go and we, you know, judge people and we're critical of others. Because we are what we are by the grace of God. And the Bible says, Paul said in Galatians, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, the point we're trying to make in reference to this, and I wanted to really touch on that with the judging, is... Um, Yes, there is a place for that, but it has to be 
correct judgment and done everything we do, we do in love, right? Yes, sir. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter chapter uh, 13, we can turn to it at the time. I mean, I can do this whole chapter tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, known as the love chapter. Where the Apostle Paul, he talked about here, and we won't read the whole thing for the sake of time, but over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, talking about the characteristics of love. Verse 4, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. And a lot of these are self-explanatory. Charity is the word here, uh, but the translation of that <coughs> is love, that divine love, agape love in the Greek, the love of God. He said, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. And I wanted to, to point that out, hopeth all things. You hope for the best in people. When people fail, you don't assume that people are doing something if if you don't know. It's not based upon knowledge. And if you do know and you do have knowledge, you, you want to help the person. You don't want to, you hope the best for them. Yeah. You hope that they'll, if they do fail and they do stumble, that they'll come back and they'll seek repentance. Right? Because we mentioned the other night, as the, as the Bible says, God is long-suffering. He's not willing that men and women perish and be separated from him, him eternally. It's God's will that men and women would be saved and that all men would come to repentance and uh, that's how that's how we're, we're to operate as Christians that's how, if we have Jesus in us that's how we will operate right yes and we grow in that grace and we grow in that love and I understand that you can't be too hard on yourself you know it's it, it's 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 uh what do they say they said making of a saint is a miracle of a moment but the Perfection of a saint is a task of a lifetime. Yeah. And I remember many years ago, I asked a man a question. The man's not around. I'm not critical. I love the man. But I had asked him, I said, and I was a young Christian. I was not, I hadn't been around at all. This man had been around some time, you know, in school and stuff. I asked him about that. Be ye perfect. What does that mean? As your, even as your father's perfect, which is in heaven. And seemingly got a little annoyed with me. I was just asking, what, is, what does that mean? Like, and I didn't know if it's because he didn't. Looking back, you know, years later, just didn't know. Or maybe thought I was being critical. And maybe as a young Christian a little bit, I was because that's a challenging scripture. Just to be honest with you. We grow and we learn, right? Mm -hmm. But I've come to realize, uh, and people have shared different things about that. What does that mean, perfect? Does that mean we're never going to... Uh, uh, we're always going to have uh, uh, never make any mistakes. And I'm not saying this to justify sin. That's not what I'm talking about. Or we're going to be perfect. Or we're always going to use the correct vocabulary and, 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 and different things. And I'm not talking about using profanity. I'm just talking about perfect in the sense of we never make mistakes. Or we never get a, a, a ticket or, a, you know. No. But when we come to God in a reality... We come to Jesus in a reality, and we allow Jesus to be in our lives. Our response to him is perfect, and we can have a perfect heart towards him. Amen? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We can do that. We still have to grow. We still have to learn. But we can have a perfect heart towards God. Because Jesus is in our heart. And that's why we have to keep our hearts. Right? The yes, Bible sir. says, to keep thy heart with all Diligence for out of it are what? The issues, the issues of life. Yes. Amen. So he says here in verse 3 And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? <laughs> and <laughs> that word there, um, where he's uh, moat comes from a a Greek word karphos, which means a twig, something pretty small. You know what a twig is, mm -hmm. 
And then he 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 bring he uses this other word, uh, beam, which comes from a Greek word dokos, which is like a beam, literally a beam. And basically what he's saying is, he's saying, uh, how are you going to say to somebody, to your brother, uh, let me uh, let me correct you on this little thing in your own in 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 your in your life, when I have this big massive thing in my life. And now sin is sin, but he's trying to illustrate a point here that first take care of your own life, clean up your own backyard, so to speak, and then you can see clearly spiritually, right? And I I believe too that, uh, and, and I really do believe this that we have enough work in our own lives <laughs> to take care of right? because we know ourselves better than anybody else right yes sir <laughs> before we go around uh moat hunting so to speak i believe it was william law you may have heard me share uh, before he wrote a book a serious call to a holy and devout life and he said and not that you should go around calling yourself this he said you're the biggest hypocrite you know because you know yourself better than anybody else right so so we look inwardly and then and then we know what to do. <laughs> he said, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, as we mentioned, and then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. And he's basically talking about being careless in the dispensing of sacred things. People that aren't going to treat God and the things of God correctly. And right there, what's he doing? You have to make a judgment to do that. <laughs> right? In order to do that. You have to use wisdom. Right? You're not judging anybody. And it's kind of interesting, the theme, when you look throughout this. He talks about that a lot. Later on, he goes on to talk about knowing them by their fruits. And that this tree won't bring forth this. It's kind of interesting, the theme of, of chapter 7, um, or a lot of what he's talking about, I should say. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And, you know... And then he goes on to say, let me read this too. Oh, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And if we're going to receive anything of the Lord, we have to ask. And ask in faith, right? The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But that being said... We have to ask correctly, right? If we ask God for something, and it's not according to his will, James said, and sometimes we wonder, well, why didn't we receive it? Sometimes we ask things for the wrong motive. James said, what, you ask, but you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lusts. And God's not going to give us something that's, that's going to hurt us, yes. right? Because you, you can pray foolish prayers. I remember one time I was at a laundromat many years ago, and they had on this police show. It was like, cops? Cops show? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? This? <laughs> no, it just, it, it's but it's funny. funny. Yeah. It's funny. It was, it was a cop. I thought maybe it was a, No, it's it, funny. It, it was a, uh, this cop show where they show the, uh, they go around and they, they actually show people get arrested. And, and it was it was a guy in Atlanta. They had pulled him over. And I'm there watching this. I couldn't believe it. And, and, it, and, he, and he's standing there like this. And he's handcuffed. And he's praying. And the, and the narrator said, <laughs> looks like he's praying that they won't find a maybe to crack cocaine in his car. Now, <laughs> if, God, if, if God does answer you, if, if, if he does, it's the mercy and grace of God. Uh, uh, that's, that's an example of foolishness. Of foolishness. Now, obviously, Christian's not going to be trying to stow away uh, cocaine in their car. Uh, or eight ball of cocaine. Uh, right. So, uh, so, so, so we ask, as Christians, uh, we ask according to God's will. And God will answer us. He said, if ye then being evil know how to give good, good uh, gifts 
unto your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Yes, sir. Right? <laughs> and I believe what? Another place he said they did that for their own enjoyment. <laughs> That's funny. Right. <laughs> God will bless us. Yes, he is. Right. Yes, he is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> If we ask for a fish, he's not going to give us a serpent, right? Right. Right. He said, therefore, all th verse 12, all things which you, whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. And that's where they get that from. You've heard it said the golden rule. Yeah. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I don't, want, I don't want people doing me wrong, so I try not to do people wrong, you know? All goes back to that sowing and reaping too. Yes. You know, you wonder sometimes, you know, maybe somebody and, and that's it's true, it's something you don't think about all the time. I've thought I've thought about that before and I've heard somebody share it. It's not original with me that uh you know, as a Christian sometimes things happen to you or people may say things you think, I'm just reaping. Maybe yeah. even Oh yeah. <laughs> from a long time ago or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fill in the blank. Through. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's payday. <laughs> He said, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. He said, enter in at the straight gate. And what he's talking about there, that word straight, uh, you know, you can look at that and read over it. And just think, oh, he's talking about, oh, the straight and narrow. Not necessarily. It is a straight and narrow. That's not what he's talking about. The straight gate that we're to enter in at, uh, there's going to be adversity. There's going to be obstacles. Yes. We're going to have uh, uh, things we have to deal with and contend with as Christians. But as Christians, uh, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard, but the commandments of God are not grievous. We have... We have the overcoming factor. We have Jesus in our life. Yes. So we can make it. Yes. We can make it. Even though there might be stumbling uh, blocks and different things uh, along the way, we, <coughs> we can make it. And, uh, you know, we don't always have to go uh, the way of the world. And I thought about that. I'm getting ready to close here in a minute. Um, as Christians... You know, we're told, love not the world, yes. neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. So we're going in a different direction than where the world is going. They're on the, the broad way, but as Christians, we're going in through the straight gate. And I thought about a salmon. Salmon's a very interesting fish. They're, they're uh, born in fresh water. They spend most of their life in the oceans, but part of their reproductive life cycle is they will go swim upstream against the current to go back where they're born in fresh water to lay eggs. And what's interesting about that is they go against the current. And if you ever watch, if you ever want to do this, you can go online. Katmai National Forest, uh, National Park, I'm sorry, in Alaska, they actually have a live webcam. Cat Brook Falls in, in Katmai National Forest, and it's amazing. It actually shows live a live camera of these huge brown bears standing on Brook Falls. There's this current. There's this current. And the sound bears trying, <laughs> trying to come up over the waterfall against the current, and these bears are right Just there with their, the with their mouth <laughs> wide open. <laughs> He's going to do it. Right. Just waiting for Just waiting for him. Just waiting for him. Yep. He's a huge, huge bear. He's very smart, man. And, yeah, smart. Right. And, and, and some of them, some of them make them. it. Some of them make it. But the point is, the thing is, they're not going the easy way. They're going against the current. Mm -hmm. ah, they have to contend with, with these huge old brown bears. Mm -hmm. These grizzly bears. And we're going to have to contend with things, too. Yes. But we can make it. Jesus said, in the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yes. 
Someone so, said it for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, we, like to say, just wait. That's right. So, so we, we have, and, and you know what? The Bible says that the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, who resists steadfast in the faith. Because your brethren are going through the same thing. The same things are accomplished in them in the world. Right. Sometimes we think we're just all alone, but it's not true. And you hear people talking, you think, man, I was, I was going through that battle, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So we have a choice. We can go in at the uh, straight gate, or the uh, which, which leadeth unto life, or the broad way, which leadeth unto destruction. But uh, we want to be, a, we want to go in the straight gate, yeah. which, which leadeth yes. unto life. Mm. Because the Bible tells us that um, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yes, that's right. And that's not God's will. And we're just about out of time. Um, we thank you for uh, for joining us tonight. And maybe we'll see. We'll, we'll see what. Maybe we'll continue with this um, again. So it's the first and first and and third third Tuesday yes. of every month. And we hope that you know you, you enjoyed the, the teachings. You can look at some of them on, on Facebook. Some are on Facebook. Some aren't on Facebook anymore. Thing, but on YouTube, Facebook a lot of them on Facebook, but on YouTube also. And uh, subscribe. You know, you can see the messages, Pastor Woods, uh, his uh, sermons and his teachings. And uh, I have some stuff on there too. And uh, like and subscribe. Just don't use the, the fat finger. I'm just kidding around. Our, our friend, our friend, you know, he told me he hit the wrong thing on the message. He hit a frowny face instead. Yeah, he, he hit a frowny I face. I saw that. No wonder yeah, he yeah. did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Oh. It was like this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, uh, I wonder. wonder. Oh, yeah. I didn't so want to ask. He hit, no he hit, he hit a, uh, uh, he hit the, the, my accent. A brown finger. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. A so fat finger. finger. That's, that's okay. I have a skeleton finger. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Oh, okay. But Who God did bless you. And, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Let's, yeah, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the teaching tonight. I thank you for the opportunity for us to come together. We thank you for the spirit of God that is here. And I just pray, God, that your word will find a lodging place in all of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, bless our fellowship this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We don't like Amen. your fellowship. Amen. You know, hang out for a few minutes if you don't mind.